Hi, Will. Welcome to Only 5 Minutes. Hi, Blake. Thanks for inviting me. Now, drone-powered aerial thermography for solar systems is growing in demand. Why are asset managers and O&Ms turning to solutions like above? So, I mean, put simply, the industry is growing exponentially now. So we all know we've got to find ways of doing more with less. So the, the, and the biggest barrier to the industry growth is the availability of skilled and experienced human resource. So um, you then compound that with the fact that people have got aging assets, um, new assets are just getting larger and larger and component quality is still a genuine risk for the industry. So, you know, at Above, we've spent the last seven years developing solutions to address these challenges. Um, and there's no doubt that high quality aerial thermography is by far the most efficient way of monitoring a solar asset's health. But thermography is not the only service offered by Above. What are some of the other services that are in demand? So, um, yeah, we, we now offer services right across the asset lifecycle. So from the development and the planning stage, we're doing um, a lot of aerial topographical surveys. So using drones and, and photogrammetry, we're able to model the terrain um, to high levels of detail that pre previously were, were not possible using, using people on the ground. Um, and so these deliverables now are used by the array um, design and modeling software packages such as PV case. So we've done tens of thousands of, of, of hectares of aerial topography. Um, and then into the construction phase, again, we're using drones and photogrammetry to monitor the construction progress and the construction quality against the, the design. Um, and, and this is really useful with assets that are so much bigger um, and the engineering oversight that's required on these large assets is really difficult to deliver. So it, it plays to a real sweet spot where we can get to assets more frequently and deliver some of this high resolution imagery um, to those engineers and to the site managers and to the project managers. Um, and then, you know, this plays into where if, if a client is developing assets across multiple markets and they're trying to get consistent oversight across those markets, we can provide that layer of consistency across the construction monitoring. Providing data to clients about their solar assets is one thing, but doing it in a digestible way is another. Have digital twins changed the game? So, yeah, so the digital twin, I mean, it's, it's, it's used everywhere at the moment. Um, basically, when we first started doing thermography, it was seven years ago now, um, we basically started doing 100% module condition monitoring. Um, and it was very, very obvious to see that that wasn't going to be surfaced in a spreadsheet. Um, and so we developed a version one of our um, solar gain platform back in 2016. Um, and it was focused on being able to distill actionable insights out of vast volumes of condition information. Um, and we found a way, we developed a way where you could, you could present the data back to the client geospatially, so it knew where it was physically, and also electrically. So this kind of electrical hierarchy. So we kind of started using the first digital twins in solar, and it really resonated with our clients because they could see the asset as it physically was and the condition information um, in that context. And this was at a time where, and it still is a problem, how do you distill actionable insights from the more traditional monitoring solutions like SCADA? It still challenges the industry. So this digital twin package that we started developing those, all those years ago, we can now represent other forms of testing and measurements and inspection data in that context. And so it really helps on that, you know, sort of robust approach to condition monitoring of an asset. One of the issues about this kind of quality control is just who pays for it, the asset manager, the owner. But has this confusion straightened out in recent years? Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, at the beginning, there was no budget line item for aerial thermography because it wasn't a thing that existed. Um, but now as the industry matures, you, you know, you're seeing these kind of techniques. They're featuring in best practice guides like those that delivered by the 
Solar Power Europe best practice guides. You're now seeing it in EPC contracts and O&M contracts. So the budgets are now there. And I think there's, as the industry matures, and also as the industry starts to see what aging assets look like and the overhead that they, that can bring, um, that there's a, you know, you're, you're, um, you're pushing on a much more open door when you're selling these kind of services because they're, they're recognized as the right way forward. Autonomous drone programs are now being seen on the market. Could you tell me about Above's most recent autonomous trial? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, we've been following the, the autonomous drone or remotely operated drone space for a number of years now um, and, and eyeing it for its potential in the solar industry. So it's quite obvious to us that um, remotely piloted or fully autonomous drones um, will play a big role in reducing the O&M costs within solar. Um, and I think, you know, you're seeing a lot of advances in the technology now. You're seeing a lot of advances in the regulator's acceptance of these kind of um, technologies. So as that matures, then I think the barriers are starting to come down. But we've been we've been working on this for a while now. We've got a number of R&D projects. We've, we've run some real world trials to prove out the uh, tech and the value proposition. So um, all I can say at this stage is, is watch this space. Will, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Cheers.